Do you like Minecraft? Do you like secrets? Do you like exploiting those secrets? Do you like watching videos? Are you tired of me asking you questions? Well, okay, you've come to the right place. Hello everyone, my name's Night Fox, and today I am going to show you 10 things in Minecraft Console Edition that will enhance your experience. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. Now to start off this list, I figured I would start off with one of the most frustrating parts of Minecraft on the console edition, at least for me that is, and that is doing parkour. The whole aspect about having to double tap the analog stick to start sprinting to make the longer jumps is, it's, it's highly annoying and can be really frustrating when you're dealing with one block jumps. It's easy to fall and die, you just, it just causes frustrations all around. But instead, if you go to the menus options, what you can do is you can actually remap the sprint button. And that'll help you tremendously when it comes to those pesky one block jumps. Because you'll no longer have to double tap the analog stick to actually start sprinting. So if we go down here, you'll see where it says the sprint option. You can click on that. And I like to change it to one of the cycle buttons. If I know I'm doing a parkour map and I'm not cycling back and forth, I'm just going to remap it to the RB button. And so then I'm going to go ahead and select and then okay and it's so much easier so much faster no need to double tap you can just hold the button down and go and as long as you can line up the jumps and time them just right you know how long I have to worry about making sure you're sprinting before making the jump as long as you're holding the button down it's easily done so let's go ahead and move on to number two now, number two on this list comes in very handy for those that are trying to make minigame maps on the Xbox console and have a need for having multiple of the same items. So, if, just take for instance, we had this diamond sword with the sharpness 5, efficiency 5, knockback, fire aspect, and looting. And we want to do that for multiple swords so each player that comes in to play this game will have an equal opportunity to win. What you're probably used to doing is putting your sword in an anvil and putting in books and doing things over and over again putting it one at a time and all that kind of stuff or if you're really fancy what you can do is you can you can put these two books together and make that one big book and stuff like that that makes it a little bit easier to where whenever you put it on there you can put everything all at once like that but i'm here to tell you that there is an easier way all you have to do is put down a dirt block or any kind of block with an item frame attached to it and, and put the item that you're wanting to duplicate in the item frame. Then simply break the block behind the item frame and you'll get another sword and another item frame. Repeat as necessary to get as many of the enchanted items that you need necessary. This is what's known as the duplication glitch and it works with literally everything. There we go. So let's go ahead and get started with number three on the list. So number three on this list, I'm going to show you how to make an infinite amount of blocks in survival using just the little materials that you have right here that you see before you in my hotbar. So all you'll need to do is place down a stone block and then around the stone block create like a little bit of a dirt trap. Uh, so I'm just going to fill this up really quickly like so. We're going to put down two pieces and then across the front just something small right there. And then a really easy thing you can do is put down one piece of snow and let's see I need to be able to pile up here so hang on one second let's go ahead and do this right there and then use the second piece of snow and a pumpkin when you do this you actually trap a snow golem in a one block radius now the reason that I have you raise it up is so you can get under it you can get into the corner or kind of away from the snowman and then you can just start digging and because it's a dirt block, because it's a stone block, it won't actually break. And you can actually just go infinitely and just get all the snowballs you want because as the snow golem stands on the spot that he is, he will create more snow. So as soon as it leaves, a new snow will pop up. Keep in mind, you will have to get a new shovel. When you have your inventory full of snow, you can come to your crafting inventory and make snow blocks out of it. And once you have your inventory clear, we'll have 31 snow blocks that we can now build with. You can create another shovel and go again. Keep in mind the snow columns are not that strong and can be beaten up pretty easily. So if you hit your snow, if you hit your shovel on him a little bit too hard or a little bit too many times, he will die. You will have to do that. So as long as you stick to the corner and dig, you will be able to get infinite amounts of snow to make the, as much snow blocks as you possibly could need. Let's go ahead and move on to number four on this list. Did you know that there was a way to turn off gravity in Minecraft? 
And no, I don't mean like we'll go floating up in the air. I mean like the falling gravity, like sand, how it falls whenever you place it, or gravel, how it also does the same thing whenever you place it. What if there was a way that you could turn that off and build platforms out of sand, or build traps out of sand, or gravel, or anything like that? Well, it's easy to do. All you need is a fence next to a three block cliff, ledge, or wall. And all you have to do, you place 20 pieces of sand or gravel three blocks up and let it fall and start getting stuck. As you can see, it won't actually stay on top of the fence, but it'll stay kind of hovering right above it. So if you do this 20 times, you can see we have 20 blocks. Let's go 20 times here and just drop down all 20 of them. What will happen is the game will not be able to update itself because everything is just dropping. And so gravity just get turned off at that point. So we've got seven, six, five, four, three, two. And now this one should be the one that will allow gravity to turn off. So now everywhere we go, we can just do sand turn and it'll just, it'll stay up. It'll stay up. It won't go down. Uh, same thing with gravel. It'll do the same thing. You can build all kinds of ledges and stuff. If you want to turn it off, just have this little mechanism right here. Also, if you want to turn it back on, it's really easy to do. Break the fence. And everything will be updated and everything will then fall at that point. Now this is actually a really handy way that you can make traps. So for example, here we have a nice little trap constructed out of using trip wire and a little bit of redstone with a piston that will push the fence out of the way and will update gravity as soon as something goes across the trip wire. So if we put in say a sheep in here and then we put in a wolf and let him go after the sheep. Go go after the sheep there we go and then he will die a most painful death for trying to attack the sheep now keep in mind also the thing in there will be dead as well but you can see kind of what the idea would happen is how as soon as he crossed the trip wire he actually activated the piston which then shoved the fence out of the way allowed the gravity to re-update itself and of course turned it back on now that it can be very helpful if you have say like a diamond block or some kind of chest in the chest room that when somebody crosses the trip wire then you won't lose the items, uh, but this is kind of an extreme example. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about number four on this list. Now, number five on this list comes really in handy if you find yourself on a mining expedition and you, of course, run out of inventory. It happens to all of us at some point or another. But if you manage to find your way to getting a silk touch pickaxe and a ender chest, you can actually use the ender chest as your own personal backpack. So all you have to do is place down the ender chest, put all of your items that you have currently in it into the ender chest itself, and you will find yourself clearing out your inventory. Then all you have to do is just break the ender chest with your silk touch pickaxe, pick it back up, and continue on your way. And when you place it back down again, or you go back home and you have another ender chest, you can go place it, and then you can see all of your stuff is still there. So it's like having your own personal backpack. Let's go ahead and talk about number six on the list. Now for the next item on this list, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this circling around, especially if you've watched videos like this before, that you could actually throw an ender pearl through a transparent block and go through it. Um, but what you probably didn't know is that glass was not the only transparent block. So if we line up, push it, and then we go through it just by throwing an ender pearl down in the corner. But what the cool thing is, is that there are also other transparent blocks such as stairs, either oak wood or cobblestone at least what I'm using for this and what you can do is you can place them backwards and then put them next to a stone block you'll see that they look exactly the same from one side and then from the other side they look completely different this is how you can create secret entrances for those that don't know how to use redstone or don't want to use redstone that you can get into behind like a secret wall or something that you have in your house just know the general area that you did it line up the ender pearl, throw it, and as you can see, we go right through the wall into our treasure room. So this would be a great way for you to get through. So let's go ahead and talk about the next item on this list. Now the next item on this list actually deals with probably the most known rule there is in Minecraft, and that is to not dig straight down. There's even been songs written about it. Don't dig down up this high you're gonna hit I'm here to tell you that you can dig straight down 
if you know how to do it right. All you have to do is you can see here, we can see two blocks right in front of us. You see where if I go on one block, the other hit counter is. If you stand right in that line, right in the middle, put your cursor right there, and you start digging down, you'll see that I can dig straight down without having to worry about falling. So I can dig right here, move over, dig further down, Keep digging down this way straight down and this is a quick way that you can actually get all the way to the bottom without having to worry about dying. So you'll know exactly what's coming along before you actually even run into it. So we're just digging down as you can see. And oh! Wow! <laughs> See, if I went past this point right here, obviously we would die a most painful death. Well, maybe not because it's falling in water, but you get the idea. Say that water was lava, we would we would have lost everything. So that's a way that you can dig down and not have to worry about falling to your death and also getting a way to get down as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and talk about the next item. The next two items on this list both deal with the mushroom biome. The mushroom biome is probably one of the more overlooked biomes in Minecraft, and if you find yourself in survival and run across one of these, do not look the other way because your luck has just changed for the better. A lot of people don't realize that mushrooms, you can actually milk them. But they don't just produce milk, they produce mushroom stew. So as long as you have this guy right here, you will never go hungry again. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. So grab a lead, take him with you wherever he goes, make your best friend, because he is going to save your life multiple times. Now the next item on this list actually deals with the mycelium itself. If you find yourself having a silk touch shovel or pickaxe, you can actually mine up the dirt itself, the mycelium, and keep it in your inventory for later use. And then later, if you find yourself in a little bit of a pickle, and you need to find shelter really quickly, all you have to do is dig down, put down the mycelium, put down the mushroom, and then grow your own shelter. And as you can see, this pretty much did it. Uh, we can clean it up a little bit by just making a floor. There we go, just like so. And now we have our own shelter that we can sleep in through the night. We can also even put a door right here, just like so, and there we go. Now we have our own little pop-up tent can get you out of some really sticky situations if you just know how to put it down quick enough. So the next item on this list actually deals with mob spawners. And as we know in the console version, there's no way for us to create mob spawners, but we can stumble across them. The problem is, I don't want to be dealing with this guy. This this guy looks like not a fun time. The skeleton guy. Like we can we can see if I break this. It, it does work. We will get some skeletons in. Oh man, that was such a bad idea. That was such a bad idea. I don't want to do this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Let's let's uh, let's take care of these guys really quickly. Looks like they're gonna be taking care of each other. At least that guy's gonna take care of that guy. Let's see if we can get this guy really quickly. There we go. Go ahead and kill that guy. Come on, do it. Do it. Yeah, there you go. That's my boy. That's my boy right there. <laughs> But let's say we want to do something a little bit more fun. Instead of skeletons, let's do cave spiders. If you go into creative, you can get into creative menu, get a spawn egg, and put it into a mob spawner, and you'll get cave spiders, which obviously we died. That was fun. So that's the hack, is that you can actually choose what you want to put in the mob spawners. They don't have to be exactly what is already in there when you stumble across them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final item on this list. So for the last item on this list, I wanted to leave you off with something that was a little bit more easily accomplished. Something that I'm sure a lot of you have found yourself in if you're in a survival world. You probably run across the point where you... What is with this cow? <laughs> you probably ran across the point where this is mad cow right here. Uh, no, but you probably ran across the point where you're you're hungry and you're needing food. Rather than spending time looking for coal and gathering resources to make a furnace and all that kind of stuff, you can save yourself a lot of heartache, save all the coal out there for other things, and gather yourself a flint and steel. If you have flint and steel, your world is going to be a lot easier, so all you got to do is come up to this cow and say, Hi, cow. Look, I'm going to show you something cool. It's going to be awesome. I mean, you might get a little heated, okay? Just don't don't worry about it. And then you, you get right by them, and you light it on fire down at the ground, and then let's just, let's just put them in there. There we go. Push them in. And then we can attack them. And as you can see, as soon as we do so, it actually cooks them. It cooks them while they're being attacked. So you can use that as an attack strategy. It actually weakens them a lot. But also, if you kill them while they're on fire, you have don't have to worry about cooking the food afterwards. So now I've got myself some handy steak. I've saved myself a lot of time, a lot of heartache. 
And there you go. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy these 10 different life hacks that you can use to help enhance your Minecraft console experience. Let me know down below if any of these helped you out or if you have any of the additional tips or life hacks or anything like that for the Minecraft console edition and you want to let us know down below, you can also feel free to comment that and I'll take a look at it. If I feel that it is something that could be worth doing a video on, I'll definitely do it and I'll be sure to give you a shout out for letting me know about it in the first place. Also, I'm going to do something a little bit different that I haven't done in many other videos. I'm going to ask for a like goal. And the simple reason is that I haven't really done anything like this on this channel. And I just kind of want to get your feedback. If you want to see more like that, uh, then definitely hit the like goal and we'll do more. That's that's kind of how this whole thing works. It's a whole part of YouTube. It's a community. You know, we got it. that's how you let me know you like it or hate it or something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and shoot for 300 likes. I know that's a little bit more than what I usually get on the videos, but... You know, new series, trying new things out. We gotta, we gotta aim for the, the mountain. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anyway, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're new and you do want to feel like subscribing, you know, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm all down for that. We're, we're cool here. <laughs> you can, you can definitely do that. I, I don't mind. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's gonna be it for the video. Until next time, stay foxy. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.